Welcome everyone to Textiles and Tea with the Hand Weavers Guild of America. I'm Kathy Group. I'm the Advertising Manager, and I get to be the host today. Um, today, we want to thank our sponsor, uh, Weave a Real Piece. They are, um, they've been sharing us in sponsoring Textiles and Tea, and we're really excited to have them here today. If you would like to know more about them, please go to their website, Weave a Real Piece, and you'll learn all about all the wonderful programming that they do. Um, we will take questions as always today. It'll be the last 15 minutes of the program. Uh, please put your questions in the Q&A and not in the chat. I know we're going to have lots of comments in chat today, and that's great. But if you would, please make sure the question gets into the Q&A so I can see it. I am so excited today because we have the one, the only, Maximal Laura here today. Maximal was born in Peru in 1959. He is a tapestry weaver, a designer, a consultant. Um, he lectures and is recognized as South America's preeminent textile artist. His work is featured in collections worldwide. He's exhibited in many museums, art centers, and galleries, and he has won numerous awards, both nationally and internationally, such as the UNESCO Prize for the Latin American Caribbean Spain in 1992, Best in Show in the Latin American Art 8 USA 2005, the People's Choice Award um, in Australia in 2008, the Outstanding Award from the Lucene to Beijing International Fiber Art Biennial, which was in China in 2008, 2010, and again in 2022. He's won the HGA Award. I'm so proud of us. And that was in 2009. And more, many, many more um, awards that we could probably go on forever about that. He also teaches nationally and internationally. He has a studio in Lima, and he has opened the Maximal Laura Museum in Cusco in 2014. I don't know about you all, but that's on my bucket list to go see it sometime. Welcome, Maximo. We are so excited to have you here today. Wow. Thank you so much. Can you turn your camera back on so we can see you? Yes, please. There he is. Thank you. This is man, yes, a great honor and pleasure. My gratitude to HEA and we have a real peace for the sponsor at this uh, meeting. So I am really happy, really happy having this tea. Uh, <laughs> this is the tea so it's mixture, mixtures about the uh, cinnamon and cloves. Ah, okay. Uh, well, I, but, I'm uh, joining but, you in that uh, today. That's what I'm having. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. Well, can you share a little bit about how you got started in fiber? Uh, really, I, I, I come from uh, family weavers. Uh -huh. my, my grandpa and my father, uh, I know very well, they are, they was uh, a weaver. So I born close the loom. <laughs> uh, really, in my my childhood time, I am talking about uh, nine years old, approximately. Uh, I helping in different areas of the uh, in the workshop. My uh, my 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 father. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, that's very interesting to introduce in this world because uh, knowing the materials, knowing how is the process, the technical process, uh, um, warping, uh, making the butterflies. Uh, even uh, washing the, the, the very sick uh, threads, what was made by hand spinning. And so very early, you know, that helping also dyeing, in this case was uh, with uh, natural dyeing, using plants, evidently more than some different chemical. Uh, so uh, carrying different things. So go on back and very early I am on the loom. So I take it that you were a helper before you actually started weaving? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Because uh, uh, when your feet is, is fit, uh, on the loom, when you are sit, right. it's okay, it's time to beginning. <laughs> because <laughs> because uh, really, you know, the, to weave, because we are talking about the tapestry weave, this is the loom, uh, mm -hmm. horizontal loom. 
This is easy because it's two straddles and you can move the ends, open it, and you can fill it. And also, uh, we are talking about a uh, uh, very basic uh, traditional uh, weaves. Mm -hmm. So that's only half in big piece bands of one color alternating with bands uh, and different thicknesses and and also uh, some um, uh, very basic geometric seams alternating with this uh, uh, these bands so evidently uh, was possible to to do for for to, in my age that I love that. If your feet can touch the petals, then it's time for you to start weaving. I like that. That's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Was interesting. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. After to come uh, from my 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 school and uh, and uh, and the weekends all the time helping. Well, you are so well known for your extraordinary use of color. And these works that we have shows how the blending of the different colored yarns work to give you that painterly quality. Uh, that, that's a perfect term for your work. The color just flows as if it's liquid. And I understand that you studied painting um, as well as weaving. So do you still paint? And how important is that painterly experience important for you to produce these incredible colors? Wow, thank you. This is a big jump in this question, really, because <laughs> uh, in the time, that time, evidently, I learned how to use the colors, evidently reproducing the, the traditional weaves. But when I moved to Lima in the early 80s uh, for continuing the uh, study at the university, Evidently, for a stay and live there, uh, where I am here right now, um, evidently uh, was necessary to change the work because it uh, was necessary to adapt a new materials, new colors, evidently. Uh, uh, so it was necessary to take risk to make my own style totally different to the, my, my, my place. Also, the market, um, uh, was necessary to for market was necessary to make differently. So uh, in this time, evidently, I need to research uh, uh, to study colors, to study different things about uh, the drawing, the technique, the, uh, different things to to do in that time. And uh, fortunately, I I adapted the, the threads what is used for knitting. This is used not for not used for do doing the tapestry or rugs. No, this is used for knitting. But it's very interesting and it's very thin. That means it was possible to put together different uh, different group of of threads in one line. <clears throat> so evidently, I take as an advantage when I, I I put together two or three or more colors. Evidently, this fantastic to obtain differently the colors and that pushed me immediately to see um, uh, pictorial works that mean uh, reproducing paints uh, different uh, master uh, ma master painters or artists etc et well that was <clears throat> going to be my next question which is I know that when you weave that you use each thread has its own color. They're not variegated, but that you always combine several strands together to get this beautiful blending of color, right? Exactly, exactly. Uh, because when it's the basic and the thicknesses of my work, uh, approximately, if it's very, very thin, like what we see in the, this hand, it's uh -huh. used approximately six to eight. But if it's more thin, it's possible to use 10 to 12 or more. Evidently, uh, this is the for grown whip. This is the basic whip. But the, in the time when I learn, I explore, I explore more different techniques, many, many different techniques. And in that case, that case was necessary only not use this uh, limited quantity. 
sometimes necessary to divide it. Sometimes some techniques need many more uh, quantities, like a double, for example. That means 44. Uh, so that is the advantage for blend colors. Uh, uh, that means have a logic, have a rip, a rip. Uh, it's necessary to uh, select it very carefully, evidently, the colors uh, uh, and with the values, because that, that, for that we can obtain any color matching with any color what we have in the paint or any, any place where, where we can do to reproduce. It's very interesting to do that. In this case, for example, I have a little, a little formula in my lab. Uh, we are talking about the lab of the, the colors where I put, for example, uh, two, two, one, two, two, one. That means uh, 40 per, uh, 40%, 40 percent, uh, this is 20 percent. That you are uh, you are changing gradually, gradually, and you can obtain many tones uh, with change gradually, and you can make very uh, smooth uh, uh, and uh, gradation, for example. So when you were learning um, tapestry as a, as a young boy, I wanna make sure I understand this. You were basically doing just strips of color. The blending of the different threads is something you developed um, when you went on, right? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Because okay. the traditional weaves is very, for, for, evidently for the weavers is very easy. But after that, when you internalize that, you need to understand very well how how work the threads and the warp and weave, how is possible, what is possible to change, what is possible to uh, to take advantage in any way. So, for example, uh, it's very important the thicknesses absolutely and the warp and weave, the distance of uh, the distance of the one to each each thread of the warp. It's necessary to understand how we how many uh, threads you need to, to put for one one quality of the whip, and also how is the relation between the threads and threads. Uh, for example, if you put if you put two two or three two two four any any quantities, you are changing the structures. Mm -hmm. When you understand very well the structures, evidently you can find really endless uh, possibilities to uh, found different textures, different techniques. That, that, is, that was very interesting. That I make in the process evidently in the time, little by little, because you know, as any, any work, uh, our, our priority is changing the time, time. Sometimes colors, sometimes design, sometimes it's techniques or return different uh, same uh, same uh, pri priority and you are focalized some of this and that time you are you are you found many you are find many different dif differences what you are developing in your own work well did you get any body saying oh you can't do that you can't mince you have to do just a band did you get anyone say that to you that no you can't do that <laughs> yeah, uh, the idea in this case, when you are, uh, especially in the in the loom, uh, you 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 can do side by side. That is totally easy. Also, you are making the horizontal line. Mm -hmm. But if you divide it into two or more parts, you are making partials. If you if you consider continuing same thread, evidently you are making geometric shapes. If you make, if you want to do the the curve, the arc, the circles, or anything, you can you can need to have you very carefully. You are changing the uh, the accumulation of these lines, so you are obtaining gradually this partial uh, or this continuous warp. What you are doing, every every uh, evidently each part is possible. Do it differently and with different techniques, 
that is what I, I do uh, in my first time. Evidently, last time is more complex, evidently, because the line is broken. Uh, sometimes it's necessary to do some parts, other parts, to add it something. Uh, depends the techniques, uh, really, that. Well, when you speak about the circles and the arches, I wanted to talk about that because weaving is pretty, you know, right angle. You got your warp, you got your weft. But exactly. not your work. Your work is just defies those limits. And we've got a comparison here, but you do beautiful circles and it's so organic. It just flows. But you also use the geometric shapes like we have on the right, which has both. How do you choose which is important for you in that work? How do you choose between the circle and the edge? And is one easier yeah. than the other? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. When you you are experimenting and working, uh, any line is same, really. But uh, my first time when I look for make different of my traditional whip, who is what is uh, which is really more geometric or mm -hmm. geometric really all, and uh, was necessary to to uh, to research about how. How is possible to do it the cure mm -hmm. and indeed evidently in first time i have problems but when i see very carefully how to obtain i i see the um, little advantages little little challenge that mean uh when uh, when you put in one thread or one line of the thread uh, warp you can put two or three I put only two, it's uh, only in this case is necessary only two. But why I put in one line two in, in warp? Because mm -hmm. that helped me to divide it in this little part for make the smooth curve to, to, to put, to obtain the, the curve. Evidently other things there are uh, helpers are like uh, outlining uh, uh, different kinds of techniques also. But mm -hmm. if you don't make that, Anyway, you can obtain if you use very well that was the, the to divide it the threads of the one line of or the line of the warp. That is very interesting. But in this case, uh, why I choose depend the matter depend the uh, what I, the same uh, uh, I am doing the design because every single tapestry is what I do. Uh, need force to drawing. The drawing. Exactly. So okay. uh, any any matter need any form to line. So only as necessary to drawing like that. So after that to paint, add evidently the to weave is use only the interpretation is to 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 materialize evidently this line because in the work I draw I draw the the design. Mm -hmm. Following that, I can obtain what is, is in my design. Uh, so uh, in, the, in the design, when I am thinking in the design, the volume of the design, I resolve the lines. Well, let me ask you this. How much time do you think you spend drawing versus in designing versus actually weaving? And I know you have assistants that help you, but... <clears throat> How much time is involved in designing? Yeah, depends uh, really that, that one. And the first time, everything what was necessary to do, uh, including to sell, promoting, everything was <laughs> made it my, for myself, <laughs> mm -hmm. evidently. But uh, in the time, evidently was changed that. But the design is intransferable, is necessary make uh, your own design if you want to have your design evidently and the first time i do with with paint pencils after i am and uh, right now well, well always the sketch i make by by pencil uh now uh that i pass with the computer evidently for fixing the, the lines before to paint uh -huh. and, uh that I do permanently, really. Uh, there, is an, there is no day 
without uh, to draw or sing in the draw or fix in the draw or look in the, uh, the drawing or designing. Sometimes it's really uh, very focused and uh, when I develop, for example, right now I am developing the No Boundaries uh, series. Uh, that is the after the pandemic time. Uh, mm -hmm. This uh, and sometimes I I I am very foc focus it and I use many times designing. Uh, but really, a, all the time I am looking my designs, fixing my designs, uh, also to whip. And my first time was very interesting because it was necessary to whip very more hard and hard. You use eight, 10, 12 hours every day, oh, working very hard <laughs> to building uh, the workshop, evidently. After that, a little by little for other responsibilities, for traveling, for making different things, evidently, I, I prepare the people who help me in the workshop, specializing and there are weavers, there are people who help me in the laboratory of color preparing the butterflies, the other people uh, uh, making uh, the finish it, well, finish it of the work, warping, different things really. And, uh, but to weave, same, every day, every day in my, in, my, in, in my head, in my hands, when I come in to my office, I have uh, upright two or three, uh, little little looms, upright mm -hmm. looms, and uh, there I can do it permanently. Use in my last two or three years, three, three years, I do many, many, uh, many, many techniques. Hopefully, become in a book for share with the weaver. Wow, how many looms do you have at your workshop? Yeah, really. Uh, before to uh, 7 Eleven, it was 35. 35? Yes. Wow. In this moment, also still, a lot of still, but not, uh, not all is working. <clears throat> well, I thought I had a lot, but I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Some well, of they... these uh, are for. Uh, now I am using for teaching, for oh, uh, oh. for make uh, the uh, the experimentation. Uh, also, there is oh. I have uh, vertical looms. Uh, there are a lot. Yeah, you know, in our work is necessary to have <laughs> tools. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to look at a couple of images here that um, I just thought was fascinating. That um, when you look at your work from a distance and then up close, that the texture that is there is just wonderful. And um, how different it looks from a distance and close up. And that might be true, but it feels like the texture is really important in your work. It's not just the image, but that you also, um, like in this picture with the, with the, um, the leaf, there, you really feel the the three dimensional of that. Is that true? Yeah, it's, for me, it's very interesting. To have uh, uh, that that uh, connection with the people who see my work. I like to much make uh, textures. So evidently, it's necessary to put in right place, mm -hmm. uh, right right uh, techniques. Uh, because some techniques is, is good for some places and also depend uh, which part of the uh, iconography or character or uh, I, we put evidently. It's necessary to uh, consider which is background, uh, which is the, the first, the second or, or principal or main or secondary lines or, or the iconographies. All of that, evidently, uh, uh, is necessary to consider for to apply any of those techniques. Uh, the, uh, there are there are basic uh, things what we we know very well where we put, but normally when we are using more complex like this uh, tapestry, what we are looking is necessary make extra paper uh, for put there uh, the, 
techniques what we will be using exactly in that that place and like on this this example again we've got the close-up and then we've got the full image is like on the eye and the beak that texture really works with the image it's just beautiful thank you thank you that is the idea really uh, uh, uh really what we are looking uh, maybe oh, what uh, uh, the workshop laura workshop have is really very basic uh, we have a uh, uh, research and using many many different techniques uh, for example uh, apparently it's very simple pick and pick you know but pick and pick is very very interesting uh, resource for make uh, different things sumac it's very interesting techniques, but mm -hmm. there is also having different variation. You can make it as a line, we can make it as like a body, we can make a, a big textures, different things. So depending, we can change really the uh, texture immediately changing in quantity. We can change the in distance and, and, and how we accumulating and how we make the design with the techniques. So it's very, very, very interesting how we can play with the texture, texture in our work. Well, one thing I'm aware of is that you do very large pieces, but I, I didn't realize you also do smaller works. Now, two questions. One, do you like one work better than the other? Do you like working bigger or smaller? And are the smaller pieces um, kind of stand alone or are they studies for the bigger pieces. No. Does that makes sense? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, thank you for the for this question. Uh, really, I like both. I like uh, both. But my preference is to make large pieces. Unfortunately, that uh, takes a long time to make, you know. Yeah. When you are weaving and the loom, that takes a long time. Uh, some, you know, some of this took uh, more than one year. A year, so uh, for that reason, some there are few few works in this size, uh, but uh, the the little ones uh, is use a little uses a, 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 um, a little a little tapestry. This is not uh, a sample. This is not used for make for big on you know, this tray. It's really doing like this uh, like this for make a miniatures uh sometimes some of they need a uh, uh, long time because we change evidently the loom we need change we need to change uh the quantity of threads in this case this is not six or ten no this is sometimes one or two because we need to do with one or two so there are other challenges with that because we can blend easily like uh, when you we have many threads so we can obtain either uh, uh, in this case also the shadows the gradation the light or different things what we are looking for to interpret our our paint there is yes, that's that that is interesting challenge really to do the miniature side it is a challenge. Uh, it's kind of like our, our small expressions exhibit. It's not just small. It's not like you take something big and make it smaller. It really has to work as a small piece, right? Yes, exactly. We can do same design any size. We can do little ones like uh, uh, 10 by 15 and we can do centimeters. One, we can do a meter by a meter half centimeters or we can do two meters was depends uh, really when you see my my in my miniature collection you can see a uh, same two biggest for example what you saw before was this little one but the very little one but it's possible to do it in big one big size also so you come from a um a family of weavers as you said earlier i'm curious was it hard to find your place or make your mark since you were like third generation, was it hard to find your place and go, this is how I'm gonna weave? Was that <laughs> hard at all or? Yes, absolutely. Um, 
I am third generation because my father and grand grandfather, but he is my my father's uh, 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 that uh, forty years ago, uh, and uh, um, I have uh, some nephews and grand nephew. Uh, some of them are now studying and uh, a final school and continuing weaving. So we are five generations in my family, but I am the third. <laughs> it's interesting that. But uh, uh, in your question, uh, when I came in, I moved to Lima. Evidently, I came with my expertise uh, from the traditional Ayacucho area uh, designs. But in Lima, it was necessary to build my own technique, my own style, because as I tell you before, was necessary to adapt it with new materials yeah. uh, like a cotton, for example. Now it's really everybody use cotton. In that time, no. Was uh, the Ayacucho area was used uh, uh, hand hand spinet hand sp spinet uh, threads for <laughs> make warp and warp warp uh, and warp and weave because it was only make blanket uh, rocks and uh, some. Uh, some little uh, adornments, but uh, f was few things for to do. But for me, uh, tapestry was necessary to uh, to understand very well that uh, what that mean the tapestry really and the contemporary homes. So for that reason, was necessary to research to understand very well and adding a new new vision and to uh, to see how it's necessary to make in designs and. Evidently, building little by little colors, designs, and techniques. When I see my in my personal collection uh, works in uh, the 80s, evidently it's totally different to last work, <laughs> to my last works or new works, and was built time and time, little by little, and evidently changing also my vision because my first stage of the work was more close. Uh, looking the traditional design, especially the pre-Columbian Peruvian design. <laughs> After that, evidently, was changed a more uh, as a now uh, totally differently. Uh, looking what happened with the war and different problems what we have. Uh, that would be interesting to look at your work and see, compare the first works to the later works and how different yeah, it's very interesting, yeah. will they be different yeah absolutely absolutely yeah. Uh, the first one was fine i i have many pictures evidently because in those uh, last uh, almost um, 40 years in lima i work a lot of these things i have many 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 designs and when they see evidently the the very <laughs> geometric and uh, very connected with that ancient cultures and now it's totally different and the colors also different the yeah. technique is different and really uh, evidently in that in each time we enjoy our work we are in our best work and our best the best level so each time changing changing and changing our dream is changing also because of the reality is sometimes push more 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 faster than our dream. <laughs> I like that. That's good. So you also teach, and I would think that teaching the how-to, the technique of uh, tapestry would be okay, but is it possible to teach your students how to understand the color, how to use the color the way you do? Is that harder to teach? Is it possible to teach? Absolutely, absolutely. Oh, okay. uh, because uh, when I when we study, when I beginning, uh, when I make the workshops, one thing what they do uses for blending the colors. Oh. Uh, when uh, the people visiting my workshop also, what I, what we see is the love of the colors, where we can we can uh, teach use how to do that. Mm -hmm. Evidently, is to understand very well the theory, uh, how is how is uh, how is the color. After that, 
we have the logic because it's mathematical this one how to uh, when you really fix the gradation for example the solid colors after that to blending is really easy really easy mm -hmm. uh, there are logic it's like it changed you have you have added this one and leaving this one adding this one and leaving this one and you are changing it's like uh, like uh, to add it grains of the anything grains of the anything if you are going from the light to darker evidently it's possible also if you are going to do one color to other color also is necessary evidently first to that is necessary have a good intuition to identify the colors very well in the values and the and the right the, the the color really right the color when you have that it's possible to do it uh, that one it's same also the the techniques if you understand very well what happened with the relation between web and war and we can see very clear very carefully carefully how to move it those interlacing uh, uh, we can obtain many things same of that is the colors also it's very very interesting and uh, and very exciting to found a very beautiful thing you can dramatize you can make very softer you can add some uh, some uh, uh, some little threads uh, for obtaining with contrast with the complementary color. So understanding some principles is possible to obtain any color. You you sound so passionate as you talk. Thank what you. is it about teaching that you enjoy? I always I'm always curious to hear from people. What is it about teaching that you enjoy? Uh, really, uh, I learn a lot teaching. This is you learn a lot teaching. <laughs> yes, absolutely. It's inter it interesting because one one thing what I I think always in my in my in my career is uh, is to see where is the where is the mistake. When you find the mistake, you are close to new one. <laughs> it's very interesting <laughs> because only you need to follow that and you can obtain really. So uh, this uh, this happy accident is very interesting for us. So to teach is for me very interesting because uh, I can organize my my colors, I can organize my design, I can I can organize my techniques, I can say how to do that. I I, I need to fix very well everything, every every techniques, and that is very helpful for for the people because. Uh, is is very interesting for uh, to teaching. <laughs> oh, that's great! That's great. So I know that you are an inspiration for a lot of people. They they love your work. They aspire to be um, uh, as colorful as you. Um, but who was your mentor as you were working, or how many mentors did you have? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for this one. I am. I consider I'm, I am considered like a uh, self tau people, uh, but in the in the early eighties, when I moved to Lima, after a few times, I found uh, a master of my career, uh, who in this time was living in Lima and uh, making a, a ex exhibition in a my first time to to go to the art gallery mm. my first time to see an ga art gallery the textile my first time to touch with the content of the textile art was volume this very interesting things my first time so in that i met with the, my master I, what i consider my master uh elvesia kela cremashi who is uh, argentinian uh, italian and uh, was very interesting. After a few times, become we become friends. I visited I visited her workshop, and there I learned really how to broke my uh, uh, my my tradition, how to understand uh, uh, the whip as possible to do as a art, how as possible to make totally different. How evidently before that 
I know it. Also, I received humility, uh, commitment, discipline, hard work. Absolutely was incredible this meeting. I consider uh, very, very special the Kela Kremashi really. She are still working very hard in Europe and common in Italy. And I am very happy knowing his, her work is, is, is very interesting, really. Uh, same same time, I know to um, Fernando Cicillo, who is painter. Uh, unfortunately, he died uh, six years away, uh, six years ago. But in this, in same, uh, well, he was friend uh, the uh, the Kela Kremashi, and in her in her workshop, um, I met with uh, Fernando Cislo, who is very absolutely incredible painter, abstract painted, but but the uh, ancestor uh, uh, influence, but very interesting the colors, the light, uh, his background is be architectural architect. So it's very interesting. So both, I think, is, is my mentor because, because I I always say in my head is working very hard to following this kind of spirit, this kind of <laughs> that work. Very, very very interesting. So what's next for you? Wow! <laughs> Thank you. I still have a lot, a lot of works. <laughs> my thing is growing more and more now. But really, hopefully, as possible, do it books about my work mm -hmm. because I have I have hundreds and hundreds uh, beautiful uh, uh, beautiful pictures. Uh, take it from my personal collection and all their works. Who I don't know where they are <laughs> uh, abroad, and uh, hopefully, as possible, that. And so I am pushing evidently for producing these books. Other things uh, I think it would be great to produce uh, about the te textile, uh, the techniques, uh, the textile, the, the weaving techniques, because I work a lot of this uh, really. Because what I am showing in my workshops only little part. Mm -hmm. Also in my workshop, I, we are using few parts, but why not? Maybe the other weavers use that. So I am I am waiting this opportunity to do. Uh, hopefully, drawing, uh, making the samples, and do it this one very, very soon. Other things, what I am doing right now is make uh, sculptures, uh, because you know the tapestries. Not only the wall is possible, goes in the air and the and our our the, as an installation, as a sculptures in any place. I am doing really. Uh, I am waiting a long time also for make because use uh, uh, shale, uh, uh, use some um, the um, my master is a sculptor weaver so i am waiting how when i become <laughs> make that and uh, evidently continuing this last uh, last two hopefully more uh, series name it no boundaries <laughs> and return to the sanctuary. So there is a lot of things what to do. Hopefully it's possible to do it still. And I am trying, trying to do that. You're a busy, busy man. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we're gonna go to questions. And I have to say that a couple of the questions already were, would you please do a technique book? So move that to the top of your list. People are waiting to get a book from you on how to do the weaving like you do it. So I think that would be a great, um, great book. And I'd sign up for that one. Uh -oh. um, somebody else wants to know you, I know you offer classes um, at your studio, right? People can sign up to come down there and take classes. Yes, uh, unfortunately I am thinking um, two years ago was push it. Uh, this is my slide, my last workshop, <laughs> but uh, there are uh, people demanding that. Uh, uh, fortunately, also my daughter Paola is working very hard. It's a good weaver now, right now, because I am here working permanently, weaving and weaving and trying and experimenting. Uh -huh. So she are continuing with this work. So uh, in the, our social media and website, 
we have the information about this workshop. Uh, the next one is uh, me, next my, me, and this uh, full right now. And uh, October, I think there are like, two people, I don't know, <laughs> maybe. So uh, we will be touching with our social media and website for say, where, when and where we will be doing. Also, uh, we are accepting some travels to different places and to do that. Yeah, we'll talk more about it later, but be sure you go to his website because a lot of that information is okay. there. So, um, oh, this is an interesting question. Nancy, Nancy Peterson said, when you blend the strands of the yarn for the weft, do you twist it? Do you ply it? How do you do that? Uh, really, that's a very interesting question. When you want to obtain different kinds of texture, especially when the techniques is floating, it's good to twist it. It's much better. When it's a longer, this, this floating, this long, the floating. But it's not, the, but it's, if it's short, not necessary. But in, in, each, in each way, without or twisted, it's very interesting and differently. Because you know, when you are twisting, you are blending a different wide of color. But when it's not, evidently, you can appear different different form the colors. So uh, th that's very interesting, evidently. And also, uh, when you have the opportunity to obtain your own thread, your own your own material, would be great. You twist them um, more than a unity the uh, weft. When we are talking, the unity is the normal what make the ground whip, because when you are looking for surface or texturing, you are talking about some uh, supplementary working and uh, uh, surface of the your whip. So uh, either both are work very well. Uh, one of the questions was, do you use mostly wool for your weft? For the weft, uh, the weft uh, really, uh, for me, any materials would be great, but uh, okay. it necessarily be softer, it's okay. But uh, normally it's uh, alpaca. Alpaca mm -hmm. mix it uh, with uh, natural other fibers or mix it with the, uh, um, the the different kinds of the threads, what uh, now in machine we can do that. <laughs> so as, as any any materials is good. For me, uh, what I, I I am choosing the 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 thread is for color really because the more important to me is have the colors because uh, in my process to this uh, to to make my tapestry uh, first I, I I do is drawing and painting. After that, I make a full size the design. After we go to on the loom. For that reason, uh, when I have the 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 paint, is necessary to obtain that color, this color. For that, is necessary any color, any materials would be great. Here in Peru, there is an, a lot of different materials. Normally, the the, the disappear some very beautiful texture to the arms. <laughs> now we have only almost one kind of thread, thread. Oh, okay. Um, some people wanted to know what type of loom, is it a vertical or a horizontal loom? And my, and what I, you see in my, all, almost all my work is an horizontal loom. And horizontal, uh, with yeah. two uh, I am working right now with, uh, with uh, three and four pedals. Uh, probably you can see that in the next time, very, very interesting things with four pedals because there are a good advantage and we can make a, a split weave and there are different kinds, evidently. Also, we can see a double weaves, different things. And uh, for me, uh, if the people are working for free uh, tools, work very well vertical loom. Vertical loom is very interesting if you are looking for uh, conceptual and 
very unique pieces and uh, uh, very contemporary art is very good because uh, you are um, free to uh, use these threads, these uh, this warps in any forms, any space, any sicknesses. It's very interesting that one really is, is a real gift. I try that. I use uh, different, different, totally different what you see in my in my work. Huh. Um, I guess I should have asked this as we went along, but a lot of people were asking about the size of your works. Do you have a like a normal size? Like when you're doing a very large piece, what's the normal size of something like that? Yeah, this is the normal, uh, the permanent work. What they do is the three by four feet, four by four, four by five, four by six, four by eight or nine, nine feet. This is normal, uh, really. What is uh, there are more big, the most uh, big quantity of what they do. Evidently, we can personalize the size because uh, right now we can print to use the uh, the cartoon immediately because it's fixed on the computer, so we can print and you can make any size what the people <laughs> like uh, for your home. Um. People were asking about the symbols that you use. Where do you get those images? Are those um, typical for the culture that you are in? Are they your imagination? Where do some of those images come from? This is uh, this is very interesting. I have a background looking a hard study, researching a lot of about, about my cultures. Mm -hmm. Really, there are many, many images, very interesting, very powerful, uh, also very symbolic. Uh, the, the symbols for me is very powerful because so with some few lines, we can say a lot of things. So for me to, to found uh, symbols with meaning is very interesting for building any messages what we are looking for, evidently. But in the time, evidently, you can devolving, devolving your your own style, your own signs, your own symbols, and adding evidently what now you can find on the world, understanding different kinds of symbols. So you can add that. But for me, the symbol is very, very important for that. I use that uh, in landscapes uh, in in any any kind of the designs. Uh, evidently, uh, I I like a lot uh, what the people is touch it uh, with the 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 meaning of this uh, these little symbols. Will the symbols change meaning if you change the color? Absolutely, absolutely. It's possible to do it also that one. Also in the context of the all all the design, mm -hmm. uh, it's possible uh, because uh, the color uh, have the, the symbolic me me meaning also mm -hmm. because it's totally different to do with uh, red, orange, yellow to make with brown and um, black and uh, maybe there. Uh, any other uh, purple colors, different, it's different that. Also blue, uh, sky blue, or different different kinds of greens make difference evidently. It's like a nature, you know. In the nature, we have the colors we can, we, we, we found mm -hmm. and, uh, and the fire and the water and the sky and, uh, and the jungle and the forest. And uh, I don't know, uh, we can found uh, our experience is always sensorial experiences, always connected with the color. So uh, really, uh, really is meaningful the colors also and uh, and the body of our works. People were asking about um, the one piece where we did the detail of it, and they were asking, do you like embroider? I guess like, especially like the detail of that bird's eye and the beak, is that embroidery afterwards or is that done while you're doing the whole tapestry? It's possible to embroider if you want. Okay. No one, there are many techniques as possible to do it. 
The use you can make print and you can put the use embroidery. It's possible. But in this case, it was not necessary. Mm. Even the, the notes, French notes, for example, we can do in this process, in same line, we can put different things, wrapping or anything, what do you see here? And simultaneously we are doing. Uh, my style, or this is tales, not only mine, there are many people who do that. Evidently it's possible, do it simultaneously, uh, many different techniques and same line. So was not necessary to do, especially uh, what we are comment, no, no, was not necessary to do after uh, the loom. Um, do you have a specific sheep breed that you choose for fleece? But you also mostly use alpaca, right? Yeah, yeah, it's uh, really, but uh, there are few tones. Uh, the palette of the 100% alpaca is few, really. Also change permanently for the fashion, because this is for other things, so it is do it, and not, not, it's not for tapestry, also for, don't make it for, for weavers, uh, because the weavers, they are, they, we are, we are no, no many people, so mm -hmm. they, uh, they, they, can, they can produce a lot of color. Uh, for that reason, uh, I, I use uh, uh, different kinds of fibers, especially mixes, that, that, uh, the, the, that exists a lot and different tones. You know, uh, even when the, the, uh, the fabric make uh, one tone, when make different, uh, different uh, repeating same color, make little different tones. So we can found colors and colors and different tones that help more and more for make our, uh, our uh, uh, pictorial work, what we are looking for permanently. Well, speaking of color, people are asking, do you dye your yarn? Um, or do you, do you dye it there at your studio? Do you have people do the dyeing for you? In the 70s, I work hard uh, helping my, my mom, uh, a lot of the uh, natural dyeing, mm -hmm. natural dyeing with different material uh, and different very beautiful tones. After that, I, I research also for helping to, uh, to improve their knowledge about uh, natural dyeing and uh, different, uh, different regions of my, my country as a consultant, as a, as a, uh, as a designer, uh, uh, as a director of uh, some places I, I go to teach that. Uh, in that time, also I learned to to uh, to to dyeing with uh, chemical dyeing, and percentual dyeing is name it. That mm -hmm. means to as that was possible uh, with uh, a good uh, technique to obtain uh, the same color after. Evidently not exactly, but almost same color. Right. Right. And reproduce any quantity any time was very interesting because evidently this technical is to know very well the uh, water, the, the fire, the, everything is very interesting to understand. Also, how the washing and prepare the material, everything was necessary. But that I make only in that time. But when I came into here, uh, my focus was to develop my work really no more dyeing or make the, uh, to the, the yarn. The yarn, lastly, I am doing exactly uh, as the last uh, question, um, twisting, for example, is very interesting because in some part, the twisting is very, very interesting effect, but we can obtain, especially some techniques. Mm, okay. Well, I am, I am sorry to say this, but we have to stop for today. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll you. tell you, I have so many questions about when are you teaching in the U.S. So we got to get you here into the U.S. People want to come to your class. That would be wonderful. <laughs> no, no, for me, always will be a great pleasure and honor be anywhere. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Maximo. I would encourage you all to go to his website. Not only do you get to see his beautiful work, but there's um, 
uh, PDFs you can download and read. There's, um, there's videos. There's all kinds of things on his website. Um, and you can probably learn all the questions that we didn't get to today. You might learn on his website. Hopefully we'll see his book soon. Thank you. We Thank want you. that book. We want that book. Yes, so thank, thank you so much. <laughs> to everybody. Thank you. Thank you. We also want to thank Weave a Real Peace for being our sponsor today. Yes, thank you so much for doing that. Absolutely. Thank you so much for real, uh, real peace. And then I personally need to thank David Hustis. If it hadn't been for David, this probably wouldn't have gotten set up. So David, I hope you're watching and thank you so much. I appreciate your help in getting this all set up. We, we do appreciate it. Yes, thank you. Thank you. If, if you are interested in becoming a sponsor for Textiles and Tea, please go to our website at weavespendie.org and you too can sign up to be a sponsor. It could be a group like Warp, it can be your guild, it can be you personally, it can be your business. And we do appreciate when our sponsors like Weave a Real Peace uh, help this program continue. You can also donate to the Fiber Trust. You can join online at wespendie.org. All of those donations help programming like this happen, whether it's careers in textiles or it's um, our exhibits or all the programming that we have. I do want to remind you that if you would like to listen to and see the jurors talk for the um, upcoming or for the past exhibits, um, we're providing in, these provide insight and you can see the imagery from the two, HGA's 2022 fiber art exhibits. The next talk is this Thursday at 1 p.m. The juror, Diane Totten, will be talking about the wearable art, the fashion show, Seasons of the Smokies from 2022, the last convergence we had this past summer. Um, you can go online and sign up for this. Uh, HGA members um, will get a discount. So go to weavespendie.org, go to exhibits and you can sign up to watch. I'm excited that next week we will have Walt Turpening as our guest. Uh, if you haven't, if you're not familiar with him, he does these beautiful um, weavings of benches and they're made just for weavers and spinners. Check him out. Thank you all so much for being here this week. I hope you have a wonderful week. And again, Maximo, this is a highlight of my year was having you on the show. Thank you so much. Muchas gracias, Katy. Mucho gracias. <laughs> Happy tea, everyone. Have a good yes, night. Everybody. Yes. Bye. Thank you. Hello.